Hey everybody, well, it's Wednesday, so it's tutorial time. We're gonna be in Maya 2020 today and we're gonna be creating the Chesterfield effect. Here we go. Okay, everybody. Well, if you've ever sold a 3D model online on, let's say, CG Trader or maybe TurboSquid, then you probably know that the most popular category is furniture. Furniture sells quite well, even better than weapons. Now, within the realm of furniture, there's one specific type that is extremely popular, but you don't see it a lot because people find it a bit complicated to model, and that is the Chesterfield effect. Now, it's basically, um, you know, buttons pushed into leather. Uh, it's kind of the best way that I can explain it. Here are a couple of reference images so you can see it for yourself. And that's the effect that we're going to create, right? Okay, here we go. So, we're going to start with a polygon cylinder. Hit Control A. And we're going to change the uh, subdivision level to 8, right? Then we're going to close that down. We're going to right click, go to face. Drag select the bottom, get rid of it, go to object mode, I'm going to go to modify and center pivot, hit W and we're going to move it down and we're going to hold down X so it will snap to our grid. There you go. Then we're going to right click, go to edge, double click on the outer edge, control E to extrude and let's tweak that offset to about there. We're going to jump to our top view. I'm going to right click and go to vertex and I'm going to start to move these to turn the outer edge uh, row there into a square. So hit W, hold on X to snap it. And we're going to do that here as well. There you go. And then we'll do these. Okay. Now, if you think this isn't big enough, you can tweak that, but I'm gonna leave it at you know that size. All right, so now that we have this, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna right click and go to vertex, take the one in the middle, push that down a little bit, and then we're gonna go in and take all of them, including the one in the middle, but not the other ones, and we're gonna push that down as well. Now, if I were to smooth this out, hit three, you basically see a plane with a dent in it. That's not what we want, right? So we're going to want to go back and what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, we're going to go to edge and we're going to double click on this edge and this edge and this edge. So if I hit four, you'll see that we have that cross selected there and we're going to hit a bevel. Now, uh, depending on uh, the level of the effect that you want, you can make that opening bigger or smaller. Let's try 0 0.03 maybe and that's fine for me. Okay, so now we have that. I'm going to hit 5 to go back. We're going to go to face. And I'm going to start to select these faces. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude. So control E to extrude. We're going to hit W and we're going to push it down. Now, don't go nuts on that. You don't want to do this, right? Just keep it subtle, something like that. Now, if I go in here and I hit 3 to preview, you'll get that effect that we want, right? Which is cool. If you want it to be uh, pushed down more, if you know what I mean, you can do that. You can drag like this and kind of, you know, push that down and then take this edge here and push that down. But again, you know, personal preference. Hit three, there you have it. And typically this comes with a button, but we'll fix that in a sec. Now, what you see is when you smooth this out, you see that these corners are rounded, right? So I'm going to hit one to go back, and we're going to sort that. What we're going to do is we're going to merge these vertices together. So I'm going to right click at a vertex, drag select. We're going to go to, uh, where is it? Here, merge. And we're going to set the threshold to one. All right. We're going to do the same here. G to repeat. One. Drag select, G to repeat, one, and we'll go in here, drag select, and G to repeat, and one. Now be careful, these are no longer on that exact position where we want it, right? So we're gonna jump up here, 
and we're going to drag select this guy. We're going to hit W to move it, and we're going to hold on X to snap it. Same here, and same here. Now we're going to do a double check from this point of view. There you go. We'll do the same here. So we got this one. And then we got this one. All right. And we now should be good. Now, uh, if you want to use this pattern on a piece of furniture, you need to duplicate it, right? So what we're going to do first is we are going to create a button. I'm going to take a uh, polygon sphere. Control A to open that up. Let's set the subdivision level to five, which is fine, five by five. We're gonna scale it down, obviously, quite a bit. And F to frame that, and we're gonna squish it. And that would be about right. And we're gonna push it in. And I kinda wanna see, you know, the overall effect and everything's smooth here. So we're just gonna hit three to smooth that out. So you can see what it would look like. And I think we need to squish this guy a bit more. And let's see if the heights are right. No office gaps there. Maybe push down a little bit further. All right, so happy with that. Now, once I select these two and I go to um, mesh and combine, it will jump back to um, the rougher mode if I hit one on both. All right, so now that we have that, let's go to edit. Let's go to delete by type and history. And now we can start to duplicate these. So my pivot is in the middle. Now, if I want to duplicate it, it's easier if it's on the corner right here. So I'm gonna hit the insert key. So the INS key, yeah. And I'm gonna hold down a V and we're gonna snap it down to the bottom and then hit the insert key again. So now if I hit control or D to duplicate, and I hit W to move and hold on V again, it will snap. And I can hit Shift D to repeat that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For example, drag select the whole thing and we'll do the whole thing again. Control D to duplicate, W to move, hold on V, move it up like so, and hit Shift D, Shift D, and Shift D. Alrighty, so now that we have all this, and we're happy with it. What we need to do is we need to uh, combine it. So we're gonna go to mesh and combine, and I now need to connect those vertices on the corners to make it a one piece. So drag select, we're gonna go to uh, merge, which is set to 0 0.01, that's fine. And if we now hit three to preview smooth, it should be one whole thing, and it is, which is fine. So we're gonna to go to uh, edit, delete by type history. Let's go to modify and center pivot and then move it to the center. Hit W, hold down X, and there you go. And at this point you can deform it, you can do all sorts of things with it. So I'll flip it up. Let's say you want to deform it. You can go to deform, nonlinear and bend Hit Control A, we'll play with this, and that's exactly the curve that I don't want. Let me just uh, fix that. We'll rotate that curve handle. Okay, so let's say you are working on an auto medicine like that. You would have this effect, and as you can see, it worked like a charm. Let me go and edit delete by type history to get rid of that control. There you go. Yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Uh, hopefully you will come up with some creative ideas to apply this technique. Uh, let me know in the comments, right? Well, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.